Today we'll be looking at an interesting piece of test equipment. This is a Tektronix THS728 digital handheld oscilloscope slash multimeter. This is actually a pretty decent one as it's truly isolated from all the channels. So both oscilloscope channels are isolated from each other. And also the multimeter is also isolated from each other. You can also use the um, trigger off the multimeter ports and so forth. So that's a good thing. Well, here you go. It does 500 mega samples a second and it's 100 megahertz, you know, front end pretty much. So pretty decent kit for its time. And this is, and the guy did say he only used it a few times and it was barely used. And I do believe him because it came with original case, documentation, all the cables, clips, the probes, even two new probes and stuff like that. So this thing was very complete and the LCD shows no sign of rare whatsoever because usually one of the typical problems with these is that that optical glue and stuff like that delaminates from the polarizer and stuff like that as it kind of dries up and flakes off from the UV from the sun when people actually do use these. And that's usually one of the rebuilds you gotta do. You gotta take it apart, remove that optical glue, change the polarizer out, and put a new polarizer in there and stuff. And thankfully, I don't have to do it on this one. But it does have a problem, and you can see right there, there's a notable offset. So let's go and set this where it should be at. And you can see there, there's the DC offset. And it does it on pretty much most of the ranges. Not all of them, though. Like 5 volts, fine. 10 volts, it's more, you know. But it does on some of the ridge, so it could be the optic couplers. There's four of them on the actual channel itself, but you can see there. Even on some of the lower ranges, some of them don't. They tried exercising and then running the um, actual compensation and stuff like that, and it's still there. But likely it's due to aging of the optic couplers. It could be the relays themselves too as well. So this likely will be a future repair video. Well, let's just go ahead and set it up to where you know, kind of can reach somewhat accurately. Doesn't do it on channel two though, that's the thing. On channel two, but you gotta remember both channel oscilloscopes are actually isolated from each other. But you can see there, it's perfectly fine on channel two, no problem whatsoever, it can go all the way up. And there's no, you know, offset at all pretty much. So it's a problem with just channel one only. But like I said, it'll probably be a future repair video. But for now, we're going to turn on the arbitrary waveform generator right here. So we'll go ahead and use it as a function generator essentially and stuff like that. And here you go. Of course, you can see there we're feeding a one kilohertz signal and it is two volt peak to peak and it's reading very accurately at least. And then like I said, it passes calibration and everything. So whatever that offset is, it's likely the optic couplers because as they do age, they do cause that. Or it could be the relays themselves. I used to repair these. It's not actual SMD capacitors because there's only two in this thing. And it's on the multimeter side. It's not on the oscilloscope side. So it's not capacitors. It's likely those optic couplers or those relays. And it could be the relays too because it's been sitting. So they could have oxidated and stuff like that causing that. But... There you go, and we'll go increase it. So we'll go to 100 hertz. I mean 100 kilohertz, my fault. And then there you go. And you can also do auto range too, but we'll just do it manually. There you go, and then we'll go one megahertz pretty much. And you gotta go and ship megahertz. And you can see there, working pretty nicely and then I could go ahead and you know of course go triangle square you can see the square wave looks like a square wave let's go to five megahertz all right and there you go and then let's go to 10 megahertz and you can see it still looks like a square wave pretty much even at higher frequency of course we go sine wave they get pretty much a perfect sine wave so it is working good now what i am going to do is go and switch this channel two and show you that channel two works properly so went ahead and switched the cable to channel two 
and I'll go and show you that it does work correctly and there you go there's two volt peak to peak and right now I'm feeding 10 megahertz signal into it and it's looking pretty good nice thing about this too as well on this particular one is you can go ahead and actually trigger off the multimeter ports so that's the nice thing too as well but there you go I'm gonna go and switch the cable to my other signal generator so we can go up to 100 megahertz so I went ahead and switched the BMC cable to the RF generator we're gonna go put 20 megahertz into it so let's just turn it on and there you go now we're gonna go ahead and put 40 megahertz we're gonna do 50 megahertz and then here you go let's just get and there's what 50 megahertz looks like on this scope. We're going to go 75 megahertz. Okay, and you can see it still looks nice and clean. We'll go 80 megahertz. And we'll go up to 100 megahertz. Let's see if we can do more than 100 megahertz. Let's go 90. Let's just see where it drops off. Okay, we'll go back down to 40. Okay, so let's just see, 50, 60, 70, that's where it starts dropping off in amplitude, 75, 80, and you can see there, and it's doing its rate of spec, I gotta say I'm quite impressed with it, 110, 120 and there you go we're at 150 and yeah I wouldn't expect that let's go 180 let's go back down to 170 160 and yeah there you go, we'll go back to 100. Yeah, so you can see this thing does do its um, rated specs to roll off. It rolls off around, you know, well, obviously it's expected to, um, you know, drop amplitude around 75 to 80 megahertz, but where it starts to go past the negative 3 dB mark is when you start hitting to like 120 megahertz and so forth, then it starts rolling off and it starts anti-lacing let's see about 180 i think it was yeah 180 that's where you know some you know severe anti-lacing if i go 175 160 yeah you can still notice the signal about 160 and it's pretty stable Yeah, but 120 is about good up to 120, 110. Yeah, so it's good up to 110, 120 megahertz. So definitely does its specification. But over our very interesting piece of test gear, let's just turn off the RF output. And yeah, there's quite a delay. This does not have the phases waveform update rate and stuff like that. Of course, this is from 96, 97. You wouldn't expect it to be as good as a desktop, you know, digital storage oscilloscope, especially nowadays. They're really, really quick. But it will get the job done. It is fully isolated on each of the channels and stuff. And besides the DC offset on channel one, it does work actually correctly. Like I said, this will likely be a future repair update when I do get the optic couplers and also check the relays and stuff like that mainly it's going to be just on channel one because channel one's the only problem i'm having all the other channels appear to be working fine but at least this concludes the video to tektronic ths 720a and i'll go and show you what it came with pretty much so here's what the top of the tektronics ths 720a handle oscilloscope looks like and there's your two isolated channels right there of course you got your plastic PNCs, you got to be careful with these because good luck in finding replacements for them if you do break them. 
your battery goes in here you just twist that cap off and then you plop the battery in there and then you know push down and twist it back on there and then here's the side there's your multimeter inputs right there and then here's for your rs232 and your probe compensation ports go right there so there you go and then there's nothing on there it's just a carrying handle right there where you use to carry it and then you can carry your oscilloscope but there you go and that's the tektronix ths 728 so here's what that tektronix ths 728 handheld oscilloscope came with it came with these P6138A oscilloscope probes, two brand new, and it got the original zip tie and everything. So these are for real brand new, which is nice, but they're used for a different oscilloscope, of course. It came with original multimeter leads. It also came with all the accessories for the scope probes, of course, which are in here. And those are oscilloscope probes. It came with the two original isolated probes are what it came with two Promona oscilloscope probes then there's all the clip leads and everything for the actual multimeter lead and then also the cable too for the oscilloscope itself and then I do have to replace this battery it's nickel cadmium it's 4c size batteries in there you can see there's no leakage on that thing and this is from um, 1196 yet there's no sign of leakage or anything which is amazing but yeah, that will be getting replaced. And then in the back side there, it came with all the documentation. It came with even original receipt, the guy's name on it, the calibration certificate, manuals, everything pretty much. I mean, this came complete. I will definitely be keeping this because you just don't find them like this. But overall, there you go. And this concludes the video of the Tektronix THS 728.